All right, the Chargers are starting to get busy in free agency, and I know it's not what everybody wants to see, which are these big-name signings, bringing back their best players. Um, I'll talk about bringing back best players because I think there's a little misconception on what they're doing, but they are actually finally starting to make some moves, and this is where you fill out your roster. This is the good things that you can do where you can sign players, you can bring them in on relatively cheap contracts, a lot of prove-it type deals, because we need to understand the situation the Chargers are in. When you look at the cap situation they're in and you look at what their talent level is, they needed to mix and change some things around. Their defense still has a chance to be very good, be put in better uh, position to succeed. You have stars on that defensive side of the ball, arguably three to four different stars on that side of the ball. The defense could be a formidable unit, and that's what they are going to build off of. And then for at least year one, they're going to hope that Herbert is good enough to keep the offense in games. So let's look at a few of the signings that they made, and I'm going to start with the best one that I thought they made um, in the last couple of days. Before I do that, if you have yet to subscribe to this channel, do it. Why not? We're making a push for 5,000. We want to be your go-to source for Chargers football, and um, we just, we've had a ton of fun doing this over the last uh, couple months since we started the channel, and the response has been huge. As you can tell, we are Lions fans. Sports Talk Detroit was our first channel, but we followed that guy into LA, into the beautiful Powder Blues. Uh, best two jerseys in football, Lions, Chargers. Let's get it. All right, first guy, Bradley Bozeman. All right, who is this guy? All right. He was drafted in the sixth round of 2018. Not an early draft pick, but he was out of Alabama. All right. So that's a football factory. And he's another one of these low cost signings that will help fill out the current roster. Here's the goal when you're going into an NFL draft. Now, if you have the fifth pick, you have the fifth pick. Like, that's fine. There can be an obvious glaring need as long as it fits in that pick. Um, but you want to go into the draft with as as few holes, like obvious holes as possible. You want to go into the draft needing to find as few starters as possible, and they now can wave center off of that list as Bradley Bozeman is a starting caliber center. I'm not saying he's an elite starting caliber center, but he is a starting caliber center. He stands at 6'5", 325 pounds. He's a big center. All right. Um, in Baltimore, he was a left guard for 19 and 20 seasons. And then in 2021, he was the team's starting center. And then he got signed by the Panthers on a one year deal, then followed that up with a three year extension, but was it released exactly one year later. So who is he? What is he going to be able to produce for you? This is a guy who's consistently been a pretty good center. All right, PFF grades between 63 and 74 his entire career. His most efficient season was in Baltimore in 2021 as a center. He found the perfect position for himself at center, which is where he remained with a bad Carolina team. He is a better run blocker than a pass blocker. But in the system that was run in Carolina, he was also a very good pass blocker as well. So don't be surprised when you see a lot of, um, I'm sorry, in Baltimore, I said Carolina. Don't be surprised if you see a lot of Baltimore Ravens being signed on this team. It just makes sense. They know the Ravens team. You have a coach that was there with the Ravens, by the way, um, with their offensive coordinator, Bradley Bozeman played for him. All right, so he knows what he can get out of him. Bradley Bozeman's best career, his career year was his fourth year in the NFL with our offensive coordinator. It's perfect. It's exactly what you want, and you want to bring some of that magic back. But that is not, that's on the offensive side of the ball. That's good. They also, as I said, you know Harbaugh's going to build up the middle. Another person that they brought in to build up the middle is this man, Puna Ford. All right, Puna Ford is an interesting kind of case study because he does not bring your prototypical size on the inside. His his weight, yes, is prototypical size, all right? He's very large. He's 310 pounds. He's only 5'11". 
So he is a wide bodied individual. And this is a guy who can use his low size to gain leverage and absolutely stack up offensive linemen in the run game. He is a very good run defender. Now, his first five years in the league were spent in Seattle, where he played a lot of snaps, especially at defensive tackle. His fourth and fifth seasons, sorry, third, fourth, and fifth season, 670 snaps, 802 snaps, and 642 snaps. I don't know what happened in 2022, but his game fell off. He re- he recuperated a little bit, but in a very limited amount of playing time with the Bills. But this is a guy who's 28 years old. He's going into year seven in the NFL. All right, he's out of Texas. I remember watching him in the Big 12, and I'm like, man, this guy's good, but he looks out of place in the wide open Big 12, especially back in 2016-17. And he is a guy who it's like, no, he can make something work in the NFL. And he absolutely did. He just has to be in the right system. Jesse Minner is going to put him in a position to win. That is what he is going to do. This will work. What you know every Harbaugh team has, every Jesse Minter defense has, and what is important to them is a guy who can sit there and hold his own and play his leverage in the run game. That is what's needed. You don't need your defensive tackles to be disruptive forces in the pass rushing game. You want one of them to be pretty good. And Puna Ford's not going to be that guy. Um, I really don't think so. But he is absolutely going to hold his own in the run game, and that's what's important. This is an area where you feel like they will improve, but this is a stopgap veteran player. Bradley Bozeman is a stopgap veteran player. I think Bozeman is better than Ford, all right, as a stopgap, but they are absolutely serviceable players on an NFL team. All right, the last player that um, you have brought in is a guy by the name of Troy Dye. Now, there's more, um, but the last player we're going to talk about in this video is Troy Dye, and we're not going to spend a ton of time on him. This is a special team signing. He's coming in here, I believe, on a one-year deal. This was a fourth-round pick out of um, Oregon in 2020. He's still only 27 years old. This has been a special teams guy. I think he's going to have the opportunity to actually play some linebacker for the Chargers. Now, is this good, bad, somewhere in between? Um, Probably somewhere in between. Uh, But there's not a ton of linebacker depth on this team right now. So I, I believe he is signing here because he is hoping that he can use his NFL experience, all right, because he has been in the league for four years. He actually played over 200 snaps as a uh, as a rookie, and he was awful. Um, after that, he was considerably better, honestly, considerably better in limited snaps uh, for the Vikings. But he is a guy that might be able to get some run for the Chargers, and I'd be kind of interested to see how good of a player he's, he's going to be. Is he a guy that's destined as a backup um, linebacker? Or is he a guy that can pull in and be a good starting uh, linebacker? I think of a guy like Jalen reeves Maben, who played for the Lions, then the Texans, now he's back with the Lions. His first four years in the NFL, his first three years in the NFL, uh, he was just a special teamer. That's what he did. And then he had the opportunity in his fourth year, a couple of injuries, uh, but also just not a lot of depth ahead of him. He was able to play a lot of football. Um, his fourth year, and that parlayed him into a pretty good two-year contract with the Texans, and that parlayed him into a pretty good two-year contract with the Lions just this year. So um, not exactly like that, but I'm paraphrasing. So uh, Troy Dye could be one of those guys. You never know. Hey, do or die. (laughs) Sorry. I was so sorry. Um, Anyways, hope you liked the video. Uh, Subscribe if if you did, and if you didn't, that's okay. Um, Give us another shot next time you see us pop up on your home feed. Thanks for watching. See ya.